Okay, so most of you guys are getting your name, date, period, all the top. Don't forget the assignment number, the page. <clears throat> Okay, today <clears throat> we um, are going to kind of extend yesterday's lesson. Yesterday's lesson, right, was on surface area prisms. Uh, we just finished on our warm up talking about um, lateral area, right, using perimeter um, and how to use it to find the surface, the total surface area. Well, guys, today is almost exactly the same, but we're not doing rectangular or triangular prisms. We are doing circular prisms, right? Or, of course, cylinders. So, um, surface area of a cylinder <coughs> um, is very much like um, surface area of a prism. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's almost identical. But what I'm going to just show you is what you're going to see in the book, and that talks about a formula. But the whole concept is exactly the same idea. So, uh, here is what you need to realize. So let's say, right, here's a, a nice perfect cylinder, so I'm kind of giving you a rough idea, but let's pretend that this paper right here was a perfect cylinder. It actually had a, a top and a bottom. Actually, we could find the lateral area of this, right? No, no bases, so um, it'd be, of course, the same. So um, if I have this right here, I'm just going to pretty much show you what I showed you guys yesterday. Is if we are to find the, well, yesterday, right, it was called perimeter of the base. What do you think this is? Circumference, circumference of the base, right? Find the circumference of the base and multiply it with the third dimension, or in this case, the height of your cylinder, right? And just talking about this, if I just go ahead and cut the tape off of our fake cylinder here and gives you a rough idea. So you have that along with the height. Well, if you unfold it, the nice part is about a cylinder is it becomes a perfect rectangle. The lateral area is a perfect rectangle. And what used to be the circumference is now the length of the rectangle and what used to be the height of it is now the width. So it's very much like yesterday. Okay, so that's why if we find and multiply the circumference with the, <clears throat> the height or the third dimension will get the total area, okay, or lateral area of, of the 3D figure. Okay, so that's basically what we're doing today. So here is what I'd like you to do is let's go ahead and let's check out on page 612, problem number one. Number one says find the lateral and surface area of each cylinder round to the nearest tenth. So they're asking again for both. Okay, so what they have is for number one, they have this cylinder. It looks like it's a, a soda can on its side, right? And it shows that this side is 25 millimeters. And it shows that it has, of course, the center of the circle there of its base with a line going straight through, which tells us it's a diameter, and that diameter they say is 19 millimeters. Okay, now, just a little side note. Yesterday, right, when we found the uh, surface area of a, of a prism, we said to find the lateral surface area, right, we find the perimeter of the base and multiply it by the height, or what I said, like I said, it's the third dimension. Same idea. Okay, what we're doing today though is, is the lateral area is going to be 
the circumference of the base times the height. Now, I don't even know if they even show that in the book. Here's what they do show. Now, actually, I don't even know if they show that. Define the circumference of a circle, right? We've talked about how the circumference is you take the diameter and multiply it by pi. And of course, if I was going to talk about this formula, it would be that. Now, do not be surprised. Here's one of the more popular ones they show in the book. And it all it does is just rename it over and over again. Instead of putting the diameter, they put 2 times r, 2 times the radius, times pi times h, which actually isn't like this. It's in this order, 2 pi r h. This is the most popular one you'll see. But ultimately, what does it mean? It means this or what we talked about yesterday. It's exactly the same thing. So you find your perimeter or circumference of your base, multiply it with the height, and that will give you the lateral area, right? And then you still, of course, need to find the area of the bases and add it, all right? So that's what we're gonna do. So here we go. We name these as steps. Step one, if you, I don't mind, I'm not too picky on it, maybe future teachers will be, because the concept's still the same. If you wanna, instead of having, instead of having all these other formulas in your mind okay this it's always good to see this because you'll see this maybe on state testing you'll see it in your book you'll see it next year it depends on the book the you know or the curriculum but you'll see all of these you just have to realize that all of them mean the same thing so if you're comfortable with this from yesterday i'm okay with you using this it, it all means the same thing so lateral area so the perimeter i'm going to go ahead and plug in the perimeter of our circle all right well right it's the circumference of the circle like we talked about now, I'm going to go over to the side here. And remember, circumference is the diameter times the pi, times pi. So the diameter, they actually give us the diameter in this one. It's 19. Pi is 3.14. So the circumference of the circle, if I grab my calculator, is 3.14 times 19 equals... 59 and 66 hundredths. So that's what I'm plugging in here. 59 and 66 hundredths. I'm going to try not to round if I don't need to. Okay. Now I'm going to plug in, of course, <clears throat> after I wrote this, that's, this is all we're doing is step two here. I'm plugging in my numbers. Now my height. Well, my height or my third dimension in this case is 25. So I grab my calculator. I go ahead and do step three. I'm going to compute it. 59 and 66 hundredths times 25 equals 1491.5. So 1,491 and 5 tenths. Now, this, of course, is our lateral area, except maybe talking about what we did when we corrected homework. Let's make sure we put a little note. Even though it's lateral area, we still need our units, square millimeters. So because it's asking for it, that is one of our answers. <clears throat> and now, like yesterday, right, we're going to find the area of the base, of one of the bases. Well, area in the base is a circle, right, pi r squared. So pi 3.14 times the radius squared. Well, the radius is not 19, it's half a 19, which is, of course, 9.5. So what I have is I have 9 and 5 tenths times 9 and 5 tenths, and I get 90 and 25 hundredths. times 3.14 times pi and now it's getting a little longer here 283 and 385 thousandths however don't forget and this is you can call it step 5 or step star just don't forget right we're finding the area of both bases so we multiply by 2 so times 2 equals 566 and 77 hundredths. That's the area of our base, or bases, sorry, both bases. 
And now, last but not least, we take our lateral area and add the area of our bases, 566. Make sure you do it by hand. Line up your place values. So 566 and 77 hundredths plus 1,491 and 5 tenths or 50 hundredths. And I get 2,058 and 27 hundredths. If I reread it, I'm seeing decimals. I'm going to make sure I read and it says round to the nearest tenth. So nearest tenth, oops, sorry. Oops, tenths is right here. Seven makes the two round up, so we end up with 2,058 and three tenths. And again, don't forget your units, squared millimeters. And there's our two answers for lateral area and surface area. Those who were using your your pi button on your calculator, if you have one, you should have gotten for the lateral area 1,492 and 3 tenths squared millimeters, and surface area would have been 2,059 and 3 tenths squared millimeters. Okay, questions before I have you guys try one. Sort of a way, right? It's a little circle review, but it's it's review from yesterday's lesson as well. Questions? All right, I'll leave that up there. I want you guys to try out problem number six on 612. Problem number six. All right, go. Okay, how many of you need more time? All right, I'll check in with you in about a minute or so. By the way, guys, those of you that have not gotten your log signed, get that thing signed. Okay, we have, we basically have one more day to get it signed.
Okay, checking in. How many of you still need more time? Okay. Those of you that are finished, just move on with another basic problem that you see there. How many of you are still working on problem number six? Okay, about 15 seconds, and then I'm going to have you guys share. Okay, turn to your neighbor and share. 30 seconds, go. For lateral area, I got 166.4 millimeters. Oh, oh, you ran into the nearest. For surface area, I got 1,268.9 millimeters. <coughs> Okay, so this one's a little weird, right? Because we have a coin, and uh, it, it actually still is a cylinder. There's a circle to it, and you actually, even though it's tiny, tiny, you have, you have height to this. You have a third dimension. You have a thickness. Okay, so um, here we go. Going to go through our steps. I'll go ahead and uh, write it down. Let's find the lateral area first. So I'm going to go ahead plug in our number so in this case our perimeter or I should say our circumference right now our circumference is of the circle so here's our circle right here it's what's facing us of the coin so we go ahead come over to the side our circumference is diameter times pi well the diameter is 26 and a half pi is 3.14 so 26.5 times 3.14 equals 83 and 2100. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in here. 83 and 2100 times the third dimension. Well, the third dimension is only 2 in this case. So multiply that with 2, and I get the lateral area being 166 and 4200. Okay, and if I take a look, um, if I take a look, I'm going to go ahead and put my units in, it's in millimeters. Okay, I'm actually looking, and the answer key, usually I only like you rounding your final answer, um, and I think that's how it should be, that's my opinion, but they kind of want this to be a final answer, so they say round to uh, the nearest tenth. So if I was to round this, right, 
the nearest tenth would be 166.4 millimeters squared. So that would be our lateral area to our coin. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead, find out the area to one of my bases, which is a circle, pi r squared. Pi is 3.14. The radius is not 26.5, right? That's the diameter. 26.5 split in half, or divided by 2, is 13.25. 13 and 2500 squared. So 13 and 2500 squared, I'll just hit the square button this time, is pretty large. 175 and 5625 ten thousandths times 3.14. So I'm going to multiply those two. So times 3.14 equals, so the area to one of the circles is 551.26625. Of course, don't forget, right, we need to multiply by 2 because we don't have one base, we have two base. All right, two bases, which are circles. So take that, it's already in the calculator, hit times 2 equals, and I get 1,102 and 5,325 ten thousandths. Move it up, sorry about that, there you go. This is the area of our two bases. So, I'm now going to take this, oops, and I'm going to add it to, I'm going to add it to the unrounded one, just in case it affects it slightly. All right, so the sum of our two bases added with our lateral area. So I, that's already in the calculator, plus 166.42 equals, and I get 1,268 and 9,525 ten thousandths. And I don't, don't want to forget to round, so to the nearest tenth. Five makes the nine go to a ten, so what we have is one, two, six. Instead of 89, it becomes 90 which is 1,269 and 0 tenths. Don't forget your units, squared millimeters. If you use the pi key, you would have gotten 166 and 5 tenths squared millimeters for that, for the lateral area, and then this surface area would have been 1,269 and 6 tenths square millimeters. So just a slight bit more. Okay, questions? times 3.14? Uh, you may want to check the settings on the calculator. Sometimes people mess with it and that may have been what happened considered it's a class calculator. So, sorry, that's kind of the risk you take if you're using class calculators because you know that other students use it and they might mess around with it a little bit. Okay, guys, other questions? Okay. All right, so here's what I want to do. Let's do one more type of problem. It's just like this, but it's, it has a little extra to it. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, 612, page 612, number 4. 612, number 4. All right, so there's a picture there of a cylinder. And it's labeled orange juice. The height, whatever it is, concentrate orange juice maybe, it's five inches. And it shows the diameter of the circle there is two and a half inches.
And so here's, let's go ahead and close read the question. Here we go, or the problem. It says, a can of frozen orange juice has the dimensions shown. A soup can has a height of 5 and 5 tenths inches and a radius of 2 inches. Is more paper needed to make the label on the orange juice can or the soup can? Explain. Now here's a nice thing, right? As soon as you guys saw the fraction here, you're probably like, oh, I've got to do it all in as a fraction. But then you turn around and read the problem, right? And it's a decimal. So I, my rule in here is, is if you have both of them, use whichever one you like. Okay, and since we're using a calculator on this, it's probably best to use a, uh, a decimal, right? So if we're going to use a decimal, I can even change this right here. Either way works. All right, so obviously what we're doing is I'm taking a look here, and, and obviously the label, and you can kind of see it in the picture of the orange, frozen orange juice can, but the label does not wrap around the top and the bottom, right? It only wraps around the side of the cylinder, which is the whole definition of a lateral area. And they want us to talk about the label on this versus a soup can. And so which one's larger, basically? Well, they, here's what the bottom line is, is they want us to compare the lateral area of each, which one's bigger, which one's smaller, OK? So I'm going to go ahead, and I don't know which one's bigger, which one's smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just draw a similar looking can. I'm going to label it. It says it has a height. The soup can has a height of five and a half inches. So it happens to be a little bit taller. And it doesn't tell us the diameter. It tells us the radius is from here to there is two inches. So. Here we go. On this particular problem, step one is, because it's talking about lateral area, let's find the lateral area of the frozen orange juice first. So lateral area is the perimeter, or the circumference, times the height of the cylinder. So here we go. Perimeter of this is the circumference, and it is circumference is diameter times the pi. The diameter in this case is 2.5. Pi is 3.14. So 2 and 5 tenths times 3 and 14 hundredths equals 7.85 or 7 and 85 hundredths. So I'm going to put that in here for the circumference. And then I plug in 5 for the height. So I multiply those two. So 7.85 times 5 equals. And the lateral area for this soup can, or the size of paper you need for the label, is 39 and 25 hundredths. And this was in inches, so squared inches. And because we have to compare them, right? We have to we have to find out, of course, step two is find out the lateral area of the soup can. So same kind of idea. I'm going to go over here. Circumference is diameter times pi. I'm going to not plug in 2 for diameter, right? I'm plugging in 4 because 2 is the radius. 3.14 for pi. So 4 times 3.14 equals circumference is 12 and 5600. So that's what I'm plugging in here. The height is 5 and 5 tenths. So 12 and 56 hundredths times 5 and 5 tenths. And the lateral area of this is 69 and 8 hundredths. And that is in inches, squared inches. So it says, the question says, is more paper needed to make the label in the orange juice can or the soup can? What's the answer, guys? Soup, soup can, right? So this could be step three. Don't forget to not just do the math, but actually answer the question. So it says soup can. Or you can put the soup can. And it does say to explain. So the soup can because, and on something like this where you're just comparing, 
as long as the math is backing up your answer, here's all you do. Because the soup, the soup can, because the lateral area is 69 and 800 squared inches, while the lateral area of the frozen orange juice can is only 39 and 25 hundredths squared inches. All right, and that, of course, is your final answer. All right, questions on that? All right, so it's just taking the use, right, of the, of the skill and using it on a problem like that. Here's the one I want you guys to try out. Uh, let's go ahead and do, on the same page, problem number 12. Problem number 12. Be very careful that problem it kind of is misleading right because they scrunched in all of the diagrams down below I don't think I didn't look at it too close I don't think any of the diagrams match the problem you're working on though so be careful of that
Okay, how many of you need more time? Okay, take it with you in about one minute. Okay, how many of you still need more time? Okay, about 15, 20 more seconds, and then we're going to share. Okay guys, 30 seconds, go ahead and turn to your neighbor and share, go. Okay, here we go. So it says Taryn is painting pillars. Sounds like a fun job. One pillar is 75 hundredths of a meter tall and 15 hundredths of a meter in diameter. Another pillar is 30 hundredths meter in diameter and 38 hundredths meters tall. Which pillar needs more paint? Okay, so um, pillars, right? It's kind of the same thing. It's, it's they hold up, uh, something they're usually on you know in some kind of structure and the pillars what do you see you see around the side because the top and bottom are covered by either the ground or the whatever it's holding up okay so what you're we're talking about is we're talking about lateral area now the very first thing you're probably going to want to do is uh probably draw the diagram that helps out a little bit and then label your diagram So if I label these, right, I'm going to go ahead and says I'm going to just reread it. One pillar is 75 hundredths meters tall. So it doesn't matter which is which. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale right now. It's just a sketching, just a diagram. 
and that and it says and 1500 meters in di diameter I want to make sure I label it correctly 1500 meters in diameter this one it says is 30 hundredths meters in diameter so be careful they switch it up on you see if you're paying attention 30 hundredths meters in diameter and 38 hundredths meters tall so it's definitely shorter okay so here we go I'm just gonna find the lateral area just like I did before that's what we're what our, uh, our character in this story parent is painting so here we go um, very first one lateral area I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my circumference of my base well in this one maybe I'll even point an arrow which one I'm talking about here where I don't lose myself so I go over to the side here circumference is diameter times pi the diameter is 15 hundredths pi is 3.14 so the circumference of that is 0.15 times 3.14 equals I end up with 471 thousandths so that is what I'm plugging in here for our circumference the height of this pillar is 75 hundredths so the lateral area is that times 75 hundredths equals and I end up with 0 0.35325 so that's the lateral area of the first one there now comes this one the second one mentioned so circumference of that circumference is diameter times pi okay and uh, the diameter is 30 hundredths oops pi is 3.14 so 3.14 times 30 hundredths or 3 tenths right is a 942 thousandths so that's what I'm plugging in here the height is 38 hundredths so that times 0.38 equals so lateral area is 35.35796 all right so if I take a look ooh that's why we don't round all right so if we take a look the ones are the same the tenths the hundreds are the same it's the thousands that shows us the difference so it is this one here so if I reread it it says which pillar needs more paint and you could say it doesn't say to explain this is the mathematical explanation you just say the pillar oops the pillar which is I'm just going to give the dimensions which is 38 hundredths in height with a 30 oops probably should put the units in there as well 30 hundredths meters diameter needs more paint and there is our final answer okay questions okay um, what I'd like you guys to do really quickly please take a look at number 14 there says, it says find the surface area of the figure it's a basically a uh, I don't want to call it a semicircle but it's a it's a half a cylinder right on top of a rectangular prism that very much goes with our cubed POD what do we not when we find the surface area what do we not have to figure out well you have to be careful when you have you don't you cannot calculate the top of the rectangular prism it's covered by the half of a cylinder and then that half a cylinder you don't have to figure out the that 
rectangle that is on the bottom, which should match up with the top of the rectangle. So it's a little bit more of a challenge. So make sure whenever you use all your numbers, keep track of what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Surface area of a, of a cylinder.